MVP. And I think uh, Twitter's breaking. Things are taking time. Okay, now we have Mary as co-host. Mary, how you doing? Were you uh, binging out on other spaces? I didn't hear you very well, but I have been non You could learn so much, you know, on it. Um, oh, okay. I think we lost so you many different, um, I mean, just so many topics. So I encourage everyone to you know, start binging with me. I can't stop listening because I have FOMO for real. <laughs> um, okay, so let me just check what time we're doing. So I went 20 minutes over on YouTube. Um, I, I ideally want to do one hour. Um, seven, that's fine. I've got a call at eight o'clock. Okay. Uh, so Mary, yeah, I'll do one hour from now. Azad, are we recording? Okay. Yep, all is good. Okay, great. Ready for the first question. I can hear you now. It's a bit shaky, but I can hear you now. Hmm. I think Mary might be having some connection issues. Um, do you want time to take over as odd while... Uh... Hey, uh, Simon, can you hear me? I think Mary brought me up. Yes, I can hear you. Awesome. I'll kick it off. Yeah, I appreciate the video is good. Uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. Uh, the, a couple questions I have. So uh, two questions, just w will be blunt. If I, you, you've created some true believers, you're the OG of Bitcoin, Ethereum, ICO, you know, you've invested in all the companies, you got plenty of equity. Um, if I were to import my Celsius claim onto Bank to the Future, Will that affect anything uh, with the bankruptcy process, whether the standalone reorg, whether it comes to voting? Um, if you could just address that question first, and I'll, I'll ask the next one. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely not. So it's just a it's just a virtual balance, um, and it doesn't mean anything unless you um, unless that balance becomes real. And so it, it it's a virtual balance that shows a claim on your custody account. Um, but there's no funds behind it. And so um, if the funds ever come behind it, uh, then it becomes meaningful. Um, if that doesn't happen, uh, then there's no purpose of it other than any uh, voting or expressing where you want to be on the other side of the process. Um, and yeah, so the, the key for it being meaningful um, is that. And also, yeah, so it, 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 that's, that's exactly what it is. Okay, I appreciate it. Thanks. And then the other question is, we've already seen what an offshore Cayman uh, bank in SBF can do. Obviously, the rampant total corruption, fraud, criminality, etc. We've also seen people that run operations like CZ, who, you know, it's almost like similar to Bitcoin, there is no central entity, there is no, you know, formal, necessarily formal headquarters. I think that you and your business kind of lean towards more of that. You know, you've gotten a lot of questions about uh, Bank to the Future. I see I, I, my good friend CR there is listening in and he, he's big on, you know, a regulated U.S. company. What would you just say to people that are somewhat hesitant based on um, you being in the Isle of Man versus people wanting like regulated U.S. companies that I know you said in the video, you know, no matter what happens, um, our funds would be in custody, et cetera. But could you just address that for the future going forward? If we if we all do come over to Bank for the Future, if that makes the most sense. Thanks. Yeah, sure. So um, the yeah, so our, our securities business is the parent securities business is a Cayman Island securities business. And what we did is we built technology called BF Identity, whereby you can onboard with a local broker in that jurisdiction. And so you as a US customer, if you were to use a custody service, then it would be used with a US um, bank charter. Um, and so therefore it was subject to the US regulations of that business and segregated in that custody. Um, if you were to invest in the securities, you'd be onboarded with a US SEC registered broker dealer. Um, and that would be subject to all the regulations in US 
um, that's integrated into the platform. Um, if you were to place a secondary trade after a one-year lock-in, um, then that would be done by a US SEC regulated ATS that's integrated into the platform. Um, so the, that's the, the thing for the US side. Um, now, most of our non-US investors don't want to be um, in that position. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's where we have those segregated entities for the securities companies, the segregated entities uh, for the custody. And I think we're moving much more to a completely transparent uh, model. Um, and so we're going to have to um, definitely boost up as a result of this, um, you know, exactly all of those. Uh, so, for example, when you invest in a security on our platform, you click a button, you agree to the terms and conditions, and there's full disclosure of the entity that you're onboarding with. Um, if you go to our terms and conditions, we show our organizational chart. Um, and I think everything's going to have to be stepped up to the next level. And essentially, um, in the future, we're going to need to do public level level of transparency uh, because that's where the industry is moving. Um, there's no hiding after this side. Um, not that we were ever hiding. And um, all I can say is that we are the longest standing company in Bitcoin. Um, and uh, we've, uh, you know, the reason that we've survived every up and down is because of that full segregation and because from where, from day one, um, we were a regulated security business. Now, I know that people um, hesitancy. So let me tell you how the regulation system works. Essentially, uh, when this is done properly, um, the if you look at our onboarding process, it's probably stricter than any other onboarding process you've been through. The reason for that is because those regulators are a lot stricter in certain aspects. Uh, the reason for that is uh, because they are regulated by the International Monetary Fund on one side that can blacklist them um, and the Financial Action Task Force on another side. So the regulator of these international regulators, as we're seeing in the FTX case, is that when you have a Bahamas um, regulated business, uh, they immediately have to file for Chapter 15 in order to bring it into the Chapter 11 process. Um, and we're seeing all of that play out in, in real time. Um, but really, I don't think there's a substitute for two different things. One is the regulation side, and this is going to be the most educated the most switched on, the most skeptical community after experiencing all of this. Um, and then you've just got the ethics and transparency of how these businesses are run. And then you've got competence and security. Um, and all of that is part of running a regulated business and part of going through that. Um, I don't expect everyone to trust. Um, we need to adjust to what the community is telling us. Um, and we need to provide the information as we progress because we've all been hurt and we've all been beaten up and we all know a lot now. No, I appreciate it, Simon. I think these last couple of years of the yield generation and the degeneracy that has resulted has, has opened the, I mean, we, we still have a lot to go, a lot to get rid of, a lot of trash to get rid of, but no, I appreciate it. The peer to peer lending model. Absolutely. The, I, I'm sure you've heard of HODL, HODL, H-O-D-L, H-O-D-L. They yeah. do that. They do the non-custodial peer to peer lending. If that's what you're talking about, I think that is a completely 100% sustainable model. I see old day long in the audience, the former Marine that he is getting back to brilliance in the basics. I'm all about it. But uh, Mary just DM me. She just asked. She got bummed if you could just bring her back as co-host. But yep, I've run my mouth long enough. Thanks for the time. Okay, cool. But the key is um, we need a business model that doesn't rely upon you having those funds um, invested. So when we come out of these chapter 11s, if there's a run on the bank and it, the business model needs all those funds in there in order to have a sustainable business, um, we've already got a sustainable business. Uh, we've already got a securities business. Um, and uh, the, 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 the retrition would be 100% because everyone would hold their securities uh, on the company and those would be segregated security. So you can do whatever you want with your coins. Um, you know, wait, wait, come back, trust us later, put them in self custody, um, or, or hold them in custody, whichever you prefer. Hey, Mary. Can you hear me? Yep. 
So do you, do you want to make me a co-host as well? So just in case uh, Mary cuts off again. I did, yeah. I think Twitter's really struggling today. I'll just, I'll go ahead, pass it over to Stephen. But uh, yeah, once again, appreciate the time. Thank you. I don't even know. <clears throat> okay, was that official? Pass the mic to Stephen. Okay, for it. Okay, uh, just a great video and uh, so much news, so much toxic, toxicity, toxicity in the spaces. So thank you, Simon. Just always bringing in a positive perspective and uh, with real plans. And and I think that connecting to the Celsius wallet that just looks awesome. So I had a question, and I don't know how much you can talk about it or not, but um, I know that the salt lending uh, is quite a big hiccup in many ways for many people. And I know from what you shared before, it was part of the uh, Celsius restructure plan uh, using their lending. Uh, can you speak to whether or how much this will delay, if at all, any of the uh, plans you had uh, put in motion as far as a bid for the Celsius uh, reorganization, and I do appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the inevitable tough question, um, and let me try and massage it without upsetting too many people. Um, so, uh, first thing is um, it was a really, really hard um, decision and process, um, but I had to just look back to what's the basics here, what's important here, and the basics are is always investors and creditors protection over anything else. Um, and I reached a realization based upon the DD um, that I personally came to my own opinion that none of the crypto lending collateral um, or processes um, are sustainable. And that was my uh, realization. Um, and they were also trading and therefore subject to counterparty risk. Um, and so once I came to that realization, um, I had to think about what is right uh, for investors based upon the information that I have and my belief um, and decided that we had to pull the deal um, and that there is, in my, my perspective, um, there's no lending platform out there that's not uh, subject to uh, the mercy of some of these, uh, the, this different model that I presented in the in the presentation. And so I'm no longer comfortable with any uh, platform that offers loans if it doesn't meet those criteria of what I, of what I presented. Um, and it's just my belief about a sustainable business model. Um, so yeah, the, so my, my commitment is that um, you can service loans as an asset to creditors, um, but I'm not comfortable offering any type of collateralized lending service until we've got the custody right and the security is right. Uh, because if your, secu if your collateral is being used and you don't know what it's being used for, then I don't think you should be putting collateral on any platform. And if you're investing in something and it looks like a savings deposit and you don't know what's happening to it, um, then that's the security. And to get to that stage, we've got to get custody right, security is right, and then rebuild lending only once it's ready um, and this contagion is over. So um, that's hopefully answers your question. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'm I, I assuming that building, building it out may just change part of the lending as part of your reconstruction plan. Obviously, that's what you're saying down, down we, the road. We don't, we don't need lending. Um, service it as an asset to the estate, um, but don't offer any more loans. Um, until this this middle this model is figured out. Okay, thank you, Simon. Thanks, Stephen. Sorry about that. Uh, have, I guess I've been on Spaces so much that I was having some problems. So um, I am Vengeance, Gilad, and then Rob. If I could also comment on, um, many people get confused. They think like um, that they don't. Most people don't understand that trading is one form of licenses. Uh, custody is another form of licenses. Offering earn or allowing people to own equity is another form of licenses called securities licenses. Offering a loan is lending licenses. And so what people think is that, so the salt part 
was for lending licenses. And so if we don't want to offer loans, get back to basics, what we do, which is equity, securities, um, and being able to segregate and have custody. Uh, once you've got that right, uh, then you can start to build some innovation with peer-to-peer -peer lending backed by fully disclosed and transparent securities as collateral. And also you've got staking, of course, new, new different models. I am Vengeance. Yes. Hi, Simon. I have a question for you. Um, so do you uh, have any update regarding the Tether clawback? Uh, and if uh, any bidder also looking to, uh, you know, consider th Tether clawback as a Celsius asset? Uh, yeah, so anyone that's in um, the bidding process or the real process um, will have to address that. Um, firstly, it will be addressed in, in court. Um, and then when you go through a bidding process, you have to construct in the terms um, exactly, you know, what, what are going to be assets of the estate in the security um, and what are not. Uh, so that that's a, a normal process. Now, you can see that that uh, went through. So whether it's um, figured out in court or whether it's negotiated as part of the bidding process, um, it, that will be that will be figured out uh, when you construct a, the security. Thanks for your question. Gerard? Gerard, can you unmute? Okay, I'm gonna move on. Rob? Hey, Simon, just wanna thank you for uh, continuing to provide uh, content during these uh, difficult times. It uh, does provide uh, clarity uh, and peace of mind for us, uh, so I appreciate that. But uh, <clears throat> I was curious when when you when the import Celsius claim goes live on the Bank of the Future. It's not live yet. What, yeah. yeah. Okay. But when it does, um, can we participate as equity holders, or is that just for token holders and creditors? Uh, this is just for creditors. Um, if you are a non-creditor, then you should have a Bank to the Future dot com account anyway, um, and you can participate in other securities offerings as we relaunch them. We're just waiting for the industry. Uh, we've got about six different license applications that we've been working through over the last year uh, to increase our um, portfolio of licenses. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, we've got a big waiting list of uh, accounts right now. Uh, so verify your account, certify your account, fill out your suitability questionnaires, um, and then we can uh, allow you to look at the different types of securities or, or trading or whatever it is that you can do based upon your jurisdiction. Okay, yeah, no, so I am on the platform and I do own equity through Bank of the Future. Okay. And I was just wondering, is there anything I can do to participate to help you guys in winning the bid for Celsius? Is there any anything we can do at all uh, to participate? Yeah, at this stage, I'm unable to comment on the bid, unfortunately. Okay. okay. Um, but uh, we, we will certainly be updating you as soon as there's something to update. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. John Giovanni? Hi. Um, on the uh, YouTube that you just did, you had two slides, the centralized yield and decentralized yield. Could you go over again what those two slides are about? Yes, yeah, so I was just, I, I did it a little bit fast, really. I should have done two presentations and done one next week. Um, and maybe I'll go deeper next week. But I, I was trying to, um, what, what I consider to be real sustainable yield. Um, and this whole industry started uh, when Bitfinex created a peer-to-peer -peer margin trading order book. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, what that means is that there are people that want to short and there are people that want to receive interest. And so um, if you want to lend your Bitcoin and crypto, you go onto an order book and you lend that to somebody else and they advertise what interest rate they want to pay and you're matched up and there's two different counterparties to that transaction. And the people that want to borrow, they had collateral uh, and the whole thing is completely peer to peer and um, on the, on that model. Um, it's done through a centralized platform. And so that was really the foundation of yield. Uh, the challenge is you have counterparty risk, so you man need to manage that one a little bit. Um, and uh, then once you have that, you have matching up people 
you know, not necessarily for margin, uh, but they post some collateral and uh, that collateral is essentially used. Um, and so I believe now the future of the model is that needs disclosure. Um, so people don't bet their future not knowing that that collateral could actually be used for something. And so therefore you have to use it in a low risk environment with full disclosure so people understand the risks. Um, so once you figure that lot out, uh, and there's a lot to unpack there, um, you also have decentralized ways of generating yield. Staking, you know, Ethereum is now a staking chain. Um, and uh, that is a real on-chain way of generating yield. And some people want to do it themselves and others will want to um, have a, a company that can verify uh, that um, through, you know, some kind of custody uh, relationship or a self-custody relationship. Um, and then you do have sustainable DeFi, which did survive the whole market. It's obviously subject to uh, the risk of smart contracts and hacking. And so the important part here is that when you decide to make these financial decisions, you know the types of risks you're taking and you only allocate a suitable amount based upon you know, what, what impact that means if that strategy goes wrong to you. Um, so I was just going through the different types of yield that we think are real. And we think that 90% of the entire industry um, is using unsustainable yield that was based upon the flywheel model uh, that was propped up by tokens um, and involved significant risks that almost that very few people knew what risks they were taking. Okay, so in the last question, were you saying that Bank to the Future at the moment isn't comfortable with doing those kinds of yields? Correct, yes. So at this stage, we're sticking to custody and securities and Custody, you can have the basics ones, staking, um, and you can have just storing. Um, and then securities is the foundation of being able to get to the lending model eventually. Um, but if you can't get the securities right, uh, then I don't think you can get the lending right. Um, and we are in the securities business anyway. So the first security would just be ensuring that everybody gets um, the equity that they're entitled to. Um, and the first custody is ensuring that everyone gets their coins. And rather than us taking your stake, you have your stake. Uh, and then there's just a fee for that, um, which is how it should be in custody, not you're lending us your coins and then we own them and then we can do what we want with them as we choose. And then you use it as collateral and you don't know what risks we're taking. And then we start trading and doing all sorts of things with it. That's the shit that's got to go. That's only then can you look at the lending model. Thanks for your question, John. Uh, now we have A.E. Adam and after that, Daniel. Yes, hi. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, so, so how do so how would people with loans currently on Celsius be incorporated into the structure? Uh, yeah, so I think that, you know, you have collateral in custody and depending on the outcome it could be backed by a security and your coins um, if you want to get more coins and somebody else wants to buy your shares then you could end up getting back to a collateralized position um, or there could be a different type of model where the the loan is clipped based upon the collateral that's being clipped um, and uh, the, the repayment becomes a, a property of the estate um, as opposed to anything else. Uh, so the loans, I think they should, they should be serviced um, as usual, uh, but uh, new loans shouldn't be issued and uh, it should be backed by a security that then can be convertible into the collateral depending on the outcome. Uh, so that way you can match up all the people that want more risk um, with those that want full collateral and you have a marketplace of, of those that want to get their coins back uh, versus those that want to purchase more shares. Thanks for your question. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, thanks guys. Um, is there, so there is a way to service the current loans without having the current regulations, correct? Uh, if the regulator signs off on that, then yes. 
Okay. And then since this is a little bit different model than what we were doing with salt, um, would loans by itself, I, I guess I'm trying to decide like if your plan would go up the same time as someone making a plan just for loans to be structured off. I'm just, I know it's a little bit different because it's not holistic like it was before. If you could just kind of address that a little bit. Um, yeah, so I, I don't really uh, care or mind. Um, I just want people to get their coins back as fast as possible and the securities that they're entitled to. We have solutions for that. Um, and whichever way is needed, um, we're, we're here to support that. Um, and so there's different processes. And every time I think I understand the process, uh, something crazy comes along that we could never have predicted. Um, I, I think we all, uh, you know, every time I reach a point of certainty, the next week just shows a completely different thing. So the, the reality is, is that we're, we're engaging in all the different processes. We've made a commitment to um, offer whatever we can for creditors to try and get them back their coins and get them securities. Um, and we'll engage in all those processes um, until the solution is found. Okay, so since you've really been able to dive deep in this space for last week and really kind of see the inner workings of, hey, what, what works for loans, what's sustainable for loans, if, you're, if your 10 million was wrapped up into loans right now, like what would you be hoping for what happens to that loan right now? Yeah, I'd want a loan that's backed by securities and backed by coins and the ability to swap out the security for coins if I want coins. Um, and just someone that can service that loan and not take out another loan until this market is, is figured out and not re, and not uh, repackage it. Okay. And then just one last point, and then I'll, I'll give it to somebody else. But I think just my concern, too, would be if we kind of looked at the bankruptcy as a snapshot of taking what was left owed on the loan, that would equivalent, that'd be the equivalent of, of you know, almost liquidating that loan at the time of bankruptcy. So... Um, we'd kind of get hit double on that, if that makes sense. If it was kind of like, if it was kind of rebalanced at that time for just the equity, um, mm -hmm. that would that would be a double whammy for us. Okay. So what we'll do is I think we can build out the different models. Um, and I think we can build optionality into these models once we've got the foundation right. The more and more we build, uh, the more clear it's getting how we can build user experiences that um, give people these different options. Because we're aware that, Many people are in many different situations and they want them done in, in different ways. Um, and we think that as long as we can have these marketplaces uh, and we can keep building on these features, um, then we think we can get to the point where people hopefully get where they need to go. We can't promise everything, but the more feedback that's given, um, the more we might be able to build this out. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it. Thanks for your questions, Daniel. Um, okay, now we have uh, Gilad and after that, Eminem. Yes, hi. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Simon. I was listening to you in Mario's um, uh, the last few days. I'm completely new to the to the uh, 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 crypto world. Uh, reason why I'm starting to learn about it is uh, because I'm coming from the angle of um, uh, uh, climate change, um, which is something I'm working on, and uh, thinking that actually we can use. Um, uh, the um, um, the blockchain to to help um, uh, our cause, and uh, I have a more general question to you, if I may, and this is the balance between the decentralization uh, 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 ID versus uh, versus more um, more um, uh, regulations, giving what what uh, we saw just happened, and how do you protect the the ID of of decentralization? How do you make that balance, in your opinion? Uh, so what we've always done is we um, fund companies that are coming up with decentralized innovation. So when Ethereum wanted to create a new blockchain, um, then we created a security that allowed our investors to pull together their Bitcoin um, and invest into that security and then receive the tokens in the future. So we've always added a security regulatory layer on top of financial innovation. Um, and then they go out and they build what they want to build. And so we invest in those companies and we allow people to co-invest in them. Um, we like the, to get the right balance between centralized. So we were, you know, we funded many of the exchanges 
um, and many of the, the, the larger companies that are now multi-billion dollar companies. Um, we funded companies that just completely flopped and went, went belly up, um, where the equity is worth zero, Celsius being an example. Um, and uh, we also uh, fund many of companies, for example, Eric Voorhees, who laid into SBF. Um, he came to us and we funded his uh, Shapeshift um, and Shapeshift ended up a DAO um, and paying those tokens out to all their shareholders. Uh, so we look for entrepreneurs that want to raise finance. They can apply on our platform. And we've got a great community of investors that want to pull together their funds and gain exposure both in a decentralized and centralized. And we fund the companies that go out and then build that centralized technology. And if at the end of this, uh, we create the system that we all desire, um, which is everybody has their own keys on their own coins, um, then I think that's mission accomplished. Uh, but I think there'll always be the people that want to do the onboarding and offboarding, and that's where you need regulations. Um, and you need the ethics of people that uh, respect those regulations and take the responsibility of you know, people's money extremely seriously and have governance structures to improve. We've got a whole lot more to improve, um, but we start from that foundation and we've been doing it longer than anyone else. Thank you so much. And, and just, do you think that the community can, can be the, so to speak, the decentralized regulator, if you will, if, if, if I may say that? I think the, the community of... was the decentralized regulator. I know exactly. I've been put under immense amount of scrutiny, more scrutiny than I've ever been put under in my life. Um, and all the scrutiny is making us bigger, better, stronger, um, and thinking how we can do things. I think, I think the community is the regulator at the moment. Um, and going through this whole experience, you know, um, on, on the channels that I've been on, on these Twitter spaces, uh, that's been discovering things at a much faster rate than regulators. But at the same time, you still need that, you know, companies that are accountable um, to those checks and controls that traditional financial institutions have been doing based upon these implosions happening in the past. Uh, so it, it all comes together. There's no one solution. Um, it's just a new world that we live in that's moving at faster than ever. Um, and we have this concept of money you can own, money you can uh, send, and money that has a fixed supply. Thank you. Super. Th thank you so much. Thank you, Gilal. Appreciate your questions. Eminem? Uh, yeah. Hi, Simon. Thanks. Hey, um, just a, a real quick question, I guess. Um, you, you've mentioned that the, I guess the new plan would be custody and equities. My, my question is for those creditors that, you know, don't, don't want to follow along with this, this new plan, this new proposal, would you be charging them your standard bank to the future 5% to get out or would creditors be able to just simply exit with whatever they've with whatever they've got at that time yeah that's the you know the, the beauty of our situation is we we have a business model um and so if we we will charge obviously our um our standard fees that's what allows us to um perform the business that we perform um and so if people want to sell their shares there's a fee if people want to withdraw their funds there's a fee um you can't have both if you want free then you get what we built before, which is a lack of transparency and lots of hidden shit that's happening in the background. Um, right, so yeah, and I, I completely understand that, but I guess I'm talking about creditors that don't want any part of this. They they just want whatever's left over. Uh, you know, they don't want to be part of the Bank to the Future. They don't want to be part of the journey. Um, are they still going to take, obviously, the haircut plus 5%? Uh, well, yeah, you'd have to be with whatever plan you end up voting on and whatever the outcome of the process is. So if you didn't, if we were involved in a bidding process and you got to vote on that, then your your option would be to vote against it. Um, but what we want, what, what we're uh, trying to aim here is that we now put together a Chapter 11 process that's not based upon other people benefiting from your securities and your assets, but you getting those assets and those securities and obviously, if you want to engage in a transaction, then there'd be a fee. Otherwise, it just wouldn't be possible. Yeah, I, no, I completely understand that. I, uh, I'm also talking about the people that don't want to be part of that and unfortunately uh, going to be funneled into it uh, regardless because of, of the vote.
Um, but I understand exactly where you're coming from, and yeah, no, I appreciate your response. Thank you, Eminem. Composed Dow. Uh, hey, uh, thank you, Simon. My name is Jeff. I'm actually former CTO at a, a wallet and crypto exchange company called Exodus, and I now run a DAO. And I just wanted to... You know, uh, we're your shareholders. Oh, okay. I didn't know we that. We funded. We did your seed round. <laughs> uh, um, how's JP? Well, I, I, I'm, no, I'm no longer there. I, I started okay. something called Composed DAO, but I, I'm actually trying to bring this up because it was something I was trying to push while I was at Exodus. But it is possible to delegate and eject assets if we had the right wallet standards and smart contract standards. And I ultimately think that I'm, I'm just approaching this from a technology standpoint. How do we get this industry to recover with the right technologies? And it seems to me, uh, I watched your presentation on YouTube. It seems to me that we can uh, do a couple of things. One is we could start using zero knowledge proofs to actually create securitized assets without having to rely on a central regulator like the SEC. And two, uh, we can start uh, adopting new wallet standards so that you can do uh, what you're suggesting by uh, deploying an asset into a DeFi protocol and then giving the uh, wallet controller the ability to eject the asset as they see fit. And I'm wondering if you think that DeFi, or as you put it, sustainable DeFi, might be part of the solution to this problem. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we're just focused on an immediate problem. Um, and uh, we've been massive supporters of, um, you know, decentralized wallets like Exodus. So we, we were the first investors in Exodus, amazing company, um, incredible growth, incredible valuation, incredible team, incredible ethics, incredible technology. Um, and we supported them by funding another company called Securitize that created um, the infrastructure for the security token that you guys launched. Um, and uh, they're an incredible company with incredible ethics, with an incredible team that got the, the regulations um, right and better than anyone else um, to launch that part of the ecosystem. Um, and if we're now ready for your solution to be um, part of and that, then we look to fund companies like you, and we have a community of investors um, that uh, are ready to invest in whatever the future of this industry is, because they believe that eventually we get to that. Um, whether we're ready for it now, uh, we just want to focus on the solution based upon what we got, um, and uh, and then fund companies like you that can make us better in the future. That's what we've been doing for over a decade, since 2011, since we first um, got into this industry. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll hit you up later on. We've got a chat session already going. I'll, I'll give you some more details on how this might be done. It's going to take a few months, but I think we can get there. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Dubba D. Hi, Simon. Um, yep. Hi there. Oh, yeah. Hey, Simon. First and foremost, I'm not sure if you're cutting in, in and space. out. Yeah, I apologize. Should be good now. Um, I came in late in the conversation here. I'm at the firehouse, so I do apologize for that. Um, my question is uh, for you and for anyone else out there, if they haven't heard the, uh, the answer to it yet, um, seeing what your thoughts are on uh, other outside lending services, possibly picking up the loan book for BlockFi or Celsius or any of these other lenders that are being, uh, that are imploding in the space right now. Yeah, I'm not um, confident on any company um, at the moment that's any got any exposure to the old model that I presented on YouTube. So right. um, I came to the conclusion that there is no counterparty that I'm comfortable with at this stage. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're in the same lane on that thought process. I, uh, I thank you for, uh, for your time and your answer on that. Thank you. Al Satoshi. Al Satoshi, can you unmute yourself? Hey, Simon, what's up? Hello. So yeah, uh, I was looking. Uh, I mean, I was uh, seeing it, the video which you presented, and I think you're absolutely right in what you're saying. I mean, there's no way we can trust any entity, and the P2P model of lending is the way ahead. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, the way things are going ahead. 
I mean, the elephant in the room right now is Binance. You know, it's it's more like they're going in a way, whereas they're the only ones who're gonna survive. You know, and we don't want that basically, because in any industry, any country, any market, if there is a monopolistic entity which controls anything, it's way too dangerous. And things which you suggested, it's the way it has to be. I mean, DeFi, decentralization, privatization, and the core principles of crypto must be adhered. Thank you, man. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, so um, to be clear, um, I still think you need centralization. You just need good actors, good regulations, disclosures, transparency, and a community of people that hold them accountable um, because it, you, you still need to onboard, you still need to offboard, uh, and you still need to figure out solutions um, to do inheritance, protect yourself from dementia, um, and manage all these. And I know that the decentralized solutions are going to get better and better and better, but we still need to fund it in, in, in centralized ways. Um, and we need to build out the ecosystem of security tokens and various other things. Uh, we've got another multi-decade of building, um, and that's why this industry is just getting started, um, and uh, this reset was needed. Um, and actually, I think it's a real blessing that all of this blew up in the time that it did. It's absolutely painful, devastating for many. Um, too big before discovering this shit. Uh, now we need to. Now we know what it is. Uh, we need to do things differently as an industry because uh, we still got a very important thing uh, called Bitcoin uh, that's still fundamentally the exact same thing it was before all this shit blew up. All right, next we've got Plan L and then after that, SP. Hi, thanks for uh, letting me get on here, Simon. Um, so I'm in a situation where I, I really have like two questions that um, I haven't been able to get answered really. Um, so for one, no matter what happens, whoever wins this kind of like bid for Celsius, when do you think we'll know exactly what our haircut will be? And then when do you think we'll have access to our funds? Minus the haircut, obviously. Thank you. Yeah, I can guess. But every time I try to guess something in this process, it, it, another, another turn comes. Um, so I still think that depending, you know, I still think there must be a way of resolving this in towards the end of Q1 next year. Um, but I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what tw plots and turns we're going to have. Um, and the, the what you'll get just depends um, exactly what, <laughs> you know, how the, how the mechanism for delivering your funds in custody is or whether they end up property of the estate and then uh, they are continually used to invest and grow another company. Um, you know, and, and those are decisions that creditors are going to have to make of which model they want. So if, if you were to win and there's still a lot of variables on when we'd actually be able to have access to our... Uh, if I were in the bidding process, which I can't confirm, right? Um, then... Uh, we just want to give you your securities and give you your funds in custody. Um, and uh, we're in the fee business as opposed to using your funds business. Um, and we're, we're, we're ready to do that. Um, I don't know how long this whole process is going to take. Uh, every time I try and guess it, uh, something else comes along that I just couldn't forecast. Right. Okay. Thanks for your questions, Plan L. Appreciate it. SP? Hi, Simon. I just have a question because I know from day one, your narrative has been that Celsius cannot reorg because we do not have licenses. And that was why you were partnering with SALT to use their licenses. And now that that deal is not going through, how do you see the licensing aspect of this? Or are you just not even going to go to the loan book and just take different parts of Celsius? I don't know. Maybe I haven't heard your plan B now. Uh, yes, yeah, so SALT was just to service additional loans in the future. Um, you have regulated custody, 
um, which involves in the US working with uh, a bank charter or a money service business with state by state money transmitters. Uh, that's nothing that wasn't anything to do with Seoul. Um, then you have earn and securities. And so in order to issue equity, package up that equity and allow people to sell it to each other in a marketplace that requires US and non US securities. So that's what we built. That's our core competence. Uh, but in order to service additional loans, then you needed the lending licenses. Um, and we've come to the conclusion that we don't want to service any additional loans uh, because we think they're all backed by speculators, hit bets and trading. So we want to focus on allowing people to uh, store their money, allowing people to store their securities. And then once you've got that, you can then move to sustainable yield um, and transparent yield where people know what they're actually um, investing in, what the risks are and, what, and full suitability. Um, and then you can build a loan book on, on top of that to collateralize. But I don't think the market's ready for it right now. Okay. And then just one quick thing. You and I are in the same boat, very different boats, but like both of our monies are, you know, on Celsius and we want the best and the most recovery we can get for both of us and everyone else there. And I've been in all these spaces with you for other people. And I would just think I would use this. And I know you're an advocate for this this space of crypto, you're an OG and you believe in it. I just would really hope instead of smear campaigns, you would build it up and say that you could be a part of like the biggest new company with the biggest mining and do this and like use it as a PR to like really show things instead of like painting it even more than it has. That's just my opinion. Cause I just want to go forward from this. I know there's a lot of bad actors and we need to do it better and right. But I really want to shine this industry and not just keep bashing it down. Because in the end, we will all benefit from that greatly. That's just my opinion. But Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah, my whole thing is that I, I just want a mechanism for giving people their coins and giving people their securities, um, not having anyone bid on them and not having anyone spend them. Um, and so that's my primary focus right now. Um, it's been a crazy journey. Uh, I've probably made lots of mistakes along the way. Um, and at times bashing felt like the thing that I needed to do in order to try and get credit as the result that they needed. Um, I've always just tried to act in what I think is right, what gets creditors their money and what I would vote for in order to get the best recovery possible. Um, and people have been really, really confused uh, because we've been through such a crazy journey together. Um, and uh, so much has changed in such a short period of time. But I think I originally said when I first came out, new code, new money, new risk model, new licenses. Um, you need securities, you need lending, you need custody. Um, tokens are going to have issues because of the, the models um, and it creates a, a risk parameter and attack. Um, I think I said all of that from day one and we've just been through this journey together to discovering that and, and, and making different mistakes together. Um, I'm a human, uh, but uh, all I want to do is, is, is find a way of giving people their coins and giving people their securities and not have other people spend them um, or invest them um, and, uh, and, and just have a, a transparent model for that. Thanks, SP. Um, next, we have Johan and then Jimmy Z. And uh, before you go, Johan, I just wanted to let you know, Simon, it's been an hour. I don't know how long uh, you wanted to go. Um, I just need to go on the hour. I think I got another meeting on the hour. Yeah. Okay. Johan. Yes. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I just would like to get some clarification um, on your position here on the loans. Um, if you are bidding, which you can't confirm, of course, and should be successful, would you consider selling the loan book or would you um, take it on in the way you have uh, described before? Yeah, so if I were to be in charge of a loan book, I'd look to package it into a security and make it the asset of the estate um, and uh, the, the operator of that charge a fee, but not service any future loans um, and start working on a sustainable way of building securities backed loans. Um, with more transparency and sustainable yield. Okay, just to follow up to that, would you 
would you consider um i'm not exactly sure how this bid process will work in this sense but could it work like some other platform would buy the loan book and then if you were to bid you would buy the rest that's not currently how they've um, set it up um so yeah they're they're uh they're not separating out like that in the bidding process okay thank you thank you johan mz Hey, Simon, uh, can you get Emery? Yes. I'm sorry, by the way, there's an important point on that. I wouldn't sell, if it, I wouldn't sell the loan book to anyone because I don't trust the industry right now in terms of what's happening. Um, and I don't, I don't trust that collateral on the old model. It, it, I wouldn't, I couldn't subject anyone to that at this stage. All right. Um, you may have touched on this already, Simon. I apologize because I've jumped in late, but, uh, Obviously, with with salt being out of the equation now, and that was initially going to be kind of how you were going to come at it if you were in the bidding process. Going forward, can you tell me what would be the advantages for say a CZ to come in and try and buy Celsius? Because I, I guess the reason I ask, at the end of the day, compared to his total user base of customers versus what we really have on Celsius. And I, I, I prefer to look at it as we have roughly 300,000 customers on Celsius. I know we have more that are quote unquote KYC and others that had started the process, but maybe didn't finish the KYC. But to CZ, what is really the value of say 350,000 customers that have some crypto on a platform? What would, what would entice him to come in and buy it or, or somebody like a CZ, for example? Uh, the only thing I can think of, because they don't have the securities piece covered and they've tried to avoid securities for as long as possible, um, I think you'd be putting them into the old model. Um, and uh, I think the main thing that CZ would be incentivized by is uh, just either trying to monopolize the industry um, or do good by the industry. Uh, I don't know how to answer that. Um, okay. It's, it's kind of your decision about how you how you believe people have got a split view on that, really. Got it. And then, one but other I think for everyone that's got a Celsius account has probably got a Binance account. Do you have one? Yeah, and that's why I wonder. To me, I'm sitting there thinking, like you just said, most people probably have a Binance account. So I've got a Binance account. I've got a Coinbase account, um, and everyone that I know that has a Voyager, BlockFi, or uh, Celsius account also has a, a Binance account and a, and a Coinbase account. Exactly. And that's why I keep thinking when some people say a customer is so valuable, I'm like, they probably already have us as a customer. So we're not that valuable to some other exchange, in my opinion, because you just, I think, I think in this process, everyone probably, if they didn't have an account with Binance or Coinbase, they probably do now. Great point. My, my other question then Simon real quick is. And Kraken, sorry. Great point. Um, I guess the question at this point is, if you were in the process and you're, you're, I guess my, what you're trying to bring to the equation, do you think that a Celsius reorg under a new co could provide much of what you're trying to bring to the equation at that point as well? Or are they still missing certain components that you would be able you have licenses or that you have something that they don't have and would need to to come out of this because there's been I, a lot I don't of know what their plan is where... I haven't seen it yet um I've spoken to Chris Ferraro um and he said he's com he won't launch anything unless it's regulated um and that's you know that's that's the the he comes from a regulated background um and uh you know we I I, I said, here's, here's what we do. Um, and again, uh, we can, I, I don't really mind where the process goes, but no, it, unless they suddenly get securities licenses, they can't issue securities. James. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move on from James and I'm going to move on to Johnny. <laughs> what happened? <now? laughs> he asked a couple of questions. So I'm going to go on to Johnny. Okay. Johnny, are you there? Can you unmute? Okay, I'm gonna go on to Alexandra. 
I also just want to finish that as well, just add a bit more. But um, if if a if a reorg wants to issue securities, um, then I just want to do whatever is needed in order to make sure that people get their coins in custody and people get their um, securities um, and that they're not spent by anybody else. That's that's kind of my philosophy of how I'm coming at it. Okay, thanks for that. I was just messing with him. Um, so I'm gonna move on to Alexandra. Go ahead and uh, unmute your mic. Hi, hi everyone. Um, I wanted to share a really personal experience that happened to me this year. I fully, I drink the Kool-Aid on not your keys, not your coins, and hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Um, I caught COVID in January and it came with this like pile of neurological effects that like literally wiped out my working memory. And I'm thankfully, I was able to like biohack it. You know, it, I paid a great amount of money out of pocket to get to this point where I could even be having this intelligent conversation here in this space. Not everyone has that luxury. And there are still a lot of long COVID haulers that have severe like neurological issues. Um, if I would have had everything in a wallet, like, in a in a in a wallet digital hardware wallet in my home and for some reason i would have had to have taken those funds out for an emergency i'm not sure that i could have been in a mental place to have done that however having a trust having an executor of my trust with that person knowing that i was like not that i was mentally incapacitated at that point they could have turned around if there was some type of financial emergency and started delegating those funds for me on my behalf. It wasn't until I had that medical, like just caught COVID, you know, I was vaccinated, I did everything right, that I now appreciate the idea of spreading your risk, you know, possibly, you know, some type of centralized entity that has like a custody option, uh, you know, some of it being on a hardware wallet that you have in your control. Um, so life is life. And while I, you know, I, I just, I wanted to share that, like it, it happens, like illness happens, like, you know, all of us in the crypto space, we tend to be kind of younger, but that's not always going to be the case. Um, we're going to grow older. We're going to get sicker. Things are going to happen. So I do think that there's a position for centralized, um, and institutional entities, um, for, for that being. Um, my next question was, Simon, regarding the the peer-to-peer -peer, um, option that's within the platform, is it specifically designed around this the, to, to like answer the issue around the whole Celsius bankruptcy? Or are you planning on taking that, or is that peer-to-peer -peer model alive today outside of the whole Celsius bankruptcy realm? Uh, yeah, so thank you very much um, for, for sharing that. Um, and I'm so happy that you got access to your funds and you got through that experience. Um, I know people that have lost, I, I know someone that's lost 25,000 Bitcoin that they couldn't retrieve again um, back in the day. Um, and so it, it's um, one of the things I'm really excited about is we, we built out the whole retirement plan B solutions where we got all the industry experts like Andreas Antonopoulos to teach people how to do the self um, storage on, on an online program. And then we got um, Pamela Morgan, the author of Crypto Asset Inheritance Planning. Uh, and then we created the whole uh, custody layer where your shares are segregated, your coins are segregated. Um, and that's where we got in the Celsius situation because we were building out a yield element to it um, in the centralized side. Um, but all of our clients were diversified um, and not exposed because they've been through the whole process where we take them through the different ways. They take, calculate the percentages. They take put together a 10-year plan type thing. Um, and so I totally, um, I, I do um, diversify for as many risks as I can think of. Um, and I totally buy into the not your keys, not your coins. And uh, that's where the vast majority of my savings live. Um, but I also don't want anyone in my family to be in a position where they can't access those funds or if something happens to me and someone tries to compromise those keys or I can't access those keys, um, I still want that not to impact my family's financial future. Uh, so it's, it's, it's my, my pet hate 
is that people come up with a map of the world and think you need to be 100% in that map of the world. Uh, and I'm a risk manager and I'm about diversification. And it's probably the only reason that why we're here today as a business that survived every one of these tumbles um, because we're always preparing for the, 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 the things that no one thinks can happen. Uh, that's what I like to do. So I, I completely empathize with that story. Um, Bank to the Future is live right now. Yeah, so um, we're currently um, on a pause right now. Um, so we've been applying for additional licenses um, and we didn't want to take any new clients on until we'd secured um, some of those additional licenses. Um, but we've got, a, you know, we've got 150,000 investors that have invested, um, I think, about $1.7 billion in what has become many of the most valuable companies in this space. Uh, and we've been doing that for a very long time. And then we have a, uh, an order matching system uh, where you're able to post the shares that you want to sell um, mm -hmm. and someone else can purchase those. And we've got a, a, a technology that takes your local jurisdiction and onboards you with a regulated um, entity based upon the jurisdiction you reside in. Okay, so it's it's within the platform. It's within the um, you know the securities and the companies that you've invested. But it's not per se. And I'm just going to give an example here. Like you know, in the United States, we had uh, LendingClub.com. They've been a peer-to-peer -peer lender for about oh my goodness, maybe twelve to fifteen years. And a lending club, yeah. Yeah, participated in them very, very early on. So, for example, if Mary wanted to go out and buy a new Tesla <laughs> and she wanted to take out a loan and I thought, you know, you had run due diligence on her, she was credit worthy, you know, then you would match me to her and yeah. then I would lend her the money that she could go out and buy a Tesla or put a solar roof on her house, whatever she wanted to do with it. So is that maybe yeah. like long term? Um, long term, yeah, definitely. We've okay. always wanted to do um, the debt markets um, and... Uh that's been in our business plan for a long time, but we, we, we now just want to get the, the custody and securities really um, buttoned up uh, because the foundation of the lending market is based upon getting those pieces right. Uh, whereas obviously in peer-to-peer -peer lending, it's more of a fiat system. Um, but yeah, I, the, a bit you may not know is that um, one of my original mentors was a guy called Mike Harris, and he was involved in creating the peer-to-peer -peer lending industry. It, crazy, it, it started in 2006 with a company called Zopa. Uh, and that's what got me into wanting to create um, a peer-to-peer -peer lending bank. And that was my original mission before Bitcoin was created. Um, and then I found the technology, uh, realized how hard it was to actually do it on the banking side. Um, so very, very familiar with that market. That's actually where I started um, when I first left investment banking. Thank you. Thanks, Alexandra. Hey, um, it's 2.56 Eastern time. Do you want to take uh, one or two yeah. more questions? We'll do one more. One more. Okay, then we've got Shockwave. And I apologize to those who are waiting. We still have some that are waiting, but thanks for being patient. Shockwave? Uh, hi, yeah. Um, I'm not a sell holder. I'm a creditor. But um, in terms of the way I'm looking at this as trying to be as objective as possible, but I know some of this I'm sure you can't talk about, but like it's hard for me to see how a Celsius restructure could be more financial benefit for a creditor as more as opposed to more beneficial for Celsius as a company. The way when I've seen stuff from you or obviously if another bidder comes in, it's just it's hard for me to see that. So when I'm trying to determine these things and one aspect is also with like the sell token, obviously I'm not a holder, but you know, especially what happened with FTX, it seems like any company that has something like that, that would go through a bankruptcy now, it's going to be even harder than, and obviously we haven't seen what Celsius is going to do yet, but I assume that they're going to try to have that token. And it's hard for me to see how that could get passed. I don't know if you can kind of touch on that. I mean, I know it's a hot uh, topic, so I don't want to put you on the spot, but it just seems like it would be harder for utility token going forward or a company's token per se. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, this is what essentially created all my haters in the first place, because um, I, I tried to say that the sell token is very, very problematic, to say the least. Um, and that's why people really started thinking I'm a bad actor. And I started getting a lot of attacks uh, from that. The second reason is because I said we should have pristine collateral and only use like uh, Bitcoin and stable coins and maybe ETH once it's transitioned to 
proof of stake and we know that the network is sustainable. Um, and I got a lot of criticism, made a lot of enemies for that. Um, and then I said we needed licenses and new management. Uh, and unfortunately, I got a lot of criticism for that. Um, but we are where we are now. Um, and from my perspective, after all of these twists and turns and circles and things that we've been through, um, I think we all know now that people have coins and those, a bunch of those coins were invested in securities. And we just need to give people their securities and give people their coins. Um, and uh, that's what, what I think, like I've come up with every structure I can think of um, around reorgs. Um, and I think there's some guiding force or guiding light that keeps pointing us in a slightly different direction every week um, as this turns. And I think we just need to get back to basics um, and give people their coins and give people their securities. Um, and yeah, I, I don't really want my coins being spent in order to grow a, another company. I'd rather have my coins and my securities and then decide which ones I want to invest in. Uh, that's just my personal preference. Um, but if it, if it doesn't go in that direction, um, then uh, we still have the ability to give people their securities. Um, and I think that that can be utilized in many of these different processes stuck in these horrific um, chapter 11s, as long as there are securities and equity um, and there is uh, coins. Uh, and hopefully we can lead the way. Uh, we'll see. Um, so, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that, um, but I, it is a controversial subject and uh, people are free and welcome to disagree. Um, and, yeah, I, 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 I've just reached a conclusion right now is that there's no other. I, I've given all the content I can give. I've given all the education I can give. Um, there are just some people that will never believe that uh, I'm giving them their coins and giving them their securities and come up with a whole nother reason uh, for you know, because we're all we're all different people and we've all been through this journey together. And at, at this at this stage, it's just important to um, make a mechanism for those that want to get out to get out, uh, make a mechanism for those that want to stay to stay um, and just get through this process and make sure that we don't get sold to somebody trying to buy our assets on the cheap or we're forced to reinvest in a company and more of our funds are used in something that we may not have wanted to invest in in the first place. Uh, that's just my preference. So um, thank you, everybody. Uh, I, I really do hope if you've been listening into this, um, you may be new to this Chapter 11 market. Uh, you may have come from BlockFi or you may come from FTX. Um, it's one heck of a journey. Uh, you, you're going you're gonna to be overdone by content by the end of this. Um, there's going to be so many twists and turns. Um, but the reality is we're stuck in this together. Uh, and uh, these Twitter spaces have just been invaluable in terms of two things, community support, creditor support, um, and also just uh, education and being able to crowdsource the collective intelligence and put it together to the best solution possible and put the pressure on people um, in order to just get the best solution possible. So, you know, no matter how bad it gets, always remember you are alive at one of the most interesting and exciting times in financial history. Um, if you are suffering from a real like dark place right now, um, you know, we, we have been through this journey. Um, we've had people that we sadly lost. Um, I created a video um, on my YouTube channel for those that may be suffering um, from any, you know, depressive tendencies as a result of this money that you've lost. Um, just know that, that, that we're in this journey together and we really need to turn this into something. Um, and uh, there is actually exciting times that we can create together uh, using financial technology. And even if it doesn't, even if you do suffer a financial loss, uh, maybe that's going to be everything you need to build a much, much better future. And I hope that we can build not just a one year trading short term. How do I make my money back? A 10 year plan of sustainable wealth that serves you for the rest of your life. Um, and that's if, if we get that out of this, then hopefully even if you suffered financial loss, this is one of the best things that happened to you is my wish. Um, and I'll commit to continuing with this. I've been doing these every day.